Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today I'm here to highlight a mere 30 seconds of content that has the potential to forever change One Piece as we know it, because the teaser trailer for the Wano arc has dropped, as has my jaw. For anyone afraid of spoilers, I won't be going into any of the actual events of Wano, so I won't be breaking down what's happening in certain key scenes or reveal characters or anything. I'm pretty much just here to talk about the visuals as represented in the trailer. Now I'm a pretty outspoken critic about the anime, which I feel is important to note because there is absolutely nothing about this trailer that does not leave me absolutely absolutely hyped. It looks stunning. Like I'll say right now, if what we're seeing is the truth of the Wano adaptation, it will be better than the manga, which is what all good anime adaptations should be. I mean, I cannot tell you just how satisfying it is to see all of the Straw Hats completely on model and in proper proportions. But it's not just them either. The secondary characters as well as Wano itself look like a living, breathing world for the first time in, in I don't even know. I honestly think that we might need to go back to the Water 7 days to see something similar. And even then, Water 7 did not look anywhere near this good. In fact, One Piece has never looked this good outside of the films. And I mean ever. I'm not just talking from a straight up artistic standpoint either, but also animation. In this trailer, we get two brief flashes of animation, the most prominent one of which is Zoro performing a slice, and I can feel the impact of it from here. That sort of fluid impact is what action in One Piece has needed for so, so long. And yes, you do occasionally see it for big events like Snake Man, but for the most part, nah. Now there is a good reason for this sudden change as it was reported a while ago, but starting with Wano, One Piece would be getting a new series director by the name of Tatsuya Nagamine. And if that name isn't familiar to you, then his work probably will be, because he directed the Dragon Ball Super Broly film, which was a visual and storytelling triumph of the entire Dragon Ball universe in my opinion. So as excited as I was when I first heard the news, I didn't want to get too carried away because this is Toei we're talking about here, and they have a habit of taking exceptional talent and squandering it with their business practices. But now that we have some tangible cues as to what One Piece may be like going forward, I have to say that I am all in. If this is going to be the state of the anime, then I will recommit to weekly anime reviews because the series will deserve that kind of digestion rather than me just listing off a bunch of complaints from week to week. So right here and now, we have Toei declaring to the world that One Piece is changing in a big way. To go into some marketing speak, this is their value proposition and I am not arguing with it whatsoever. Shut up and take my money, etc. But despite the fact that I've probably called this video something stupid like get hyped, I do need to discuss the very real potential that this is not going to be the standard state of One Piece moving forward. The thing is that even with this beautiful artwork and fluid animation, there is still potentially going to be a pacing problem that exists as a result of One Piece being an all year anime series. Now, currently Currently, the manga is more or less a year ahead of the anime, at least with its current adaptation rate, which is one chapter a week if we're lucky, and we have rarely been lucky for the Reverie arc. So if Wano does come with decent pacing on top of the animation and the artwork, meaning that we're adapting at least two chapters per episode, it does present the very real threat that the anime will catch up to the manga in no time at all. Like we're talking six months or so. And that is a definite problem. One that can be solved by the same solutions that are discussed over and over and over again, which is either by making the series seasonal, which I don't think is happening, otherwise I feel like it would have been announced by now, or by making filler arcs, which is tricky in Wano, but definitely not impossible. However, if neither of those options are chosen and the adaptation rate remains the same, then we're going to see the same sort of problems popping up in Wano as we do everywhere else in the anime, where it just feels like it takes no and forever to get anything done whatsoever because of all of the, what would you call it, I guess, canon filler? And I also feel like I need to point out the outcome that would confirm that we truly live in the darkest timeline, which is the idea that this trailer was outsourced and that the actual series won't look anything like this. I mention this because the animation here looks expensive, like super good One Piece stampede levels of expensive, which is stunning but worrying because for well over a decade now, Toei's business model has been to spend as little money on the series as possible. So either they've had a gigantic change of business plan, possibly due to decaying interest in the anime as a whole, or this is a really devious move to get people interested in the anime again, and then Toei will go on to serve them exactly the same sort of crap as usual. I really hope that this is not the case, but I can't lie, it's something that I can see Toei Shueisha and Fuji TV doing because they haven't cared about the series from anything from a cash cow perspective for so long long now that you do need to question why things would be changing so late in the game at this point, which could be, as I just stated, a noticeable decline in profit from their current product. Now I have no real way of proving that one way or the other, but they're all businesses, so it's unlikely that they're all of a sudden going to be motivated to do their property some artistic justice. That's, that's just not how businesses work. So I guess what I want people to take away from this trailer is yes, get excited. Get very excited even, because this is one hell of a value proposition, and I think that it is very much needed to sustain the Wano arc, because if people thought Hawk Cake Island and Dress Rosa were a slog in the anime, I think that doing Wano in the same style would make them both look quite merciful in comparison. However, with this in mind, if Toei does not deliver on this proposition, then we need to hold their feet to the fire. But until proven otherwise, I'm going to remain incredibly excited for the Wano arc, which is legitimately the first time I've been excited to watch new episodes of the anime in probably... Uh, 
ever. I mean, this could be a complete renaissance of One Piece and lead to a whole new age of this brilliant story completely dominating everything that is manga and anime. However, it could also be a blatant bait and switch. It's very high risk, high reward. But mark this date on your calendars, the 7th of July, which is going to be easy for me to remember because that's my anniversary. But that is the day that is going to decide the future of One Piece as the first episode of Wano is broadcast. Fingers crossed. But that pretty much does it for this brief discussion on the even briefer trailer for the Wano arc. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of your amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if Patreon isn't quite your style, then please do leave this video a like, share or subscribe because it also helps support this channel an incredible amount. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the Wano trailer. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.